Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome. If you've never been here before, never watched any of my videos, here on my channel, I cover true crime cases and pretty much all the cases that I cover are a little bit more on the vintage side. They're all basically 20 years or older. So if that's something that you might be interested in, maybe go down below, click that subscribe button and also make sure to turn on the post notifications to be notified every time that I upload because even after like five years on YouTube, I still don't have a consistent upload schedule. I'm feeling very fall today. It's officially October, which is my favorite month. And I know a lot of other people's favorite month, but in October, if you are new to my channel and you don't know this for the last four months of the year, I have a different theme for every month. Unfortunately, solve September did not go as I wanted it to, but October, I do oldies October and oldies October, pretty self-explanatory. It's basically just, the entire month of October, I cover really old cases and I have a lot planned for this month. The first case that I'll be covering for Oldies October, it's a really interesting one. It happened in 1934, which is many moons ago, happened a long time ago. And there's not a lot of information online about it, but I tried to collect as much as I could. And other than being really interesting, it's also kind of drama filled. I mean, I'm very respectful when I talk about these cases, but there's some drama going on in this case. It's like some 1930s Jerry Springer type stuff going on. But with all that being said, let's get right into it. This is the unsolved disappearance of Olga Major. Now, her last name is spelled M-A-U-G-E-R. And when I was researching this case, I was like, okay, Malger, Malger. It's Malger, right? No, it's apparently pronounced Major. So nobody comes after me I'm pronouncing it Major, Olga Major. Olga Major was born Olga Schultz in the year 1913 in Midwest Natrona County, Wyoming. Not much is really known about her early life, but we do know that she grew up fishing, hunting, and trapping. She was definitely an outdoorsy girl. We also know she was a descendant of Beaver Dick Lee, who was an English American mountain man referred to by many as possibly the West's last mountain man. He was a very famous, well-known trapper, scout, and guide around the area we now know as Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So all of this outdoorsy stuff, it was kind of in Olga's blood. Olga spent a lot of her time outside of the home in the great outdoors. That was just how Olga was. As for a description of Olga, Olga was described as being a raven-haired beauty. She was very pretty, and in 1934, she turned 21 years old and this year would be the year she would meet her husband, a man named Carl Major. And the way they met was definitely scandalous to say the least. Carl Major was an oil man who in 1934 would have been 28 years old, so several years older than Miss Olga. Now, Olga and Carl, they met at a dance that they both were attending in Midwest Wyoming. Olga went alone to this dance from my knowledge. She didn't have a date, but Carl did. Carl went to this dance with his girlfriend. His girlfriend's name was Ella. And when it comes to Carl and Ella, they didn't just meet. They had been dating for about five to six years at this time. And it was very serious between them, or so Ella thought. I guess. As the story goes, they had been together for years as boyfriend and girlfriend and Ella, she was just, she was in love with Carl and she was anticipating marriage. She wanted to marry him. Ella desperately wanted to marry the man she thought was the love of her life, which was Carl Major, but it didn't seem like he really wanted to marry Ella. Apparently, as the story goes, Carl, he kept putting off marrying Ella because he claimed he wanted to wait until he was financially ready. So Ella just, she kept waiting and waiting and waiting until the night of the dance. She just kept waiting until then because at the dance, that's when Carl and Ella's relationship would end because as soon as Carl saw Olga, 
he wasn't thinking about Ella anymore. Do keep in mind that this story was so long ago. So who who knows exactly what happened that night at the dance? I mean, none of us were there, but it was said that Carl and Olga, they got a little too close that night and right in front of Ella. And Ella was not too happy about this. Apparently she stormed off and left the dance. That's, that's what was said about what happened at the dance that night. So Carl, saw Olga that night and it was just, it was love at first sight and apparently this feeling of love at first sight was also felt by Olga as well and the two Olga and Carl they became very close extremely fast they just they couldn't get enough of each other they were absolutely smitten they were just gaga over one another and remember how Carl made Ella wait years and years and kept telling her he needed to wait until he had enough money for a proper wedding to marry her well, I call BS because only weeks after knowing each other, Carl and Olga, they got married. They married in August of 1934 in Nebraska. And you can only imagine how heartbroken and furious Ella was. Now, Carl and Olga, the newlyweds, they may have felt bad about hurting Ella, but they, they were just focused on each other at the time. They had their wedding and they started planning what they wanted to do for their honeymoon where to go you know where were they going to go for their honeymoon you know they were thinking about places somewhere tropical perhaps some some place new that neither of them had been no no the two of them they decided to stay right in wyoming and go to a place that olga knew all too well Togati pass Togati pass is a mountain pass located on the continental divide in the absaroka mountains an area about 30 miles northwest of dubois wyoming they were going to spend time there elk hunting. Now, as much as I don't like that they were hunting elk, that's what they were doing there, so. But anyways, Olga, she was a country girl and she loved the wilderness. This area of Togati Pass, she knew it like the back of her hand. Six days into their stay there, they decided to go into the wild to head towards an elk game trail. Olga always made her way towards an area around there called the Great Divide. Olga at the time, she was wearing tan breeches, some laced up boots, she had a hatchet on her, and she also brought some sandwiches in baggies that they could eat for lunch when they got hungry. If you want an enjoyable hiking experience, don't go with me because I constantly think we're gonna get eaten by a bear, that we're gonna be bear food. And I have to stop for a break like every 15 to 20 minutes, but that was not Olga. Olga was not afraid of anything out in the wilderness and she barely ever took a break, ever. So when Olga randomly decided that she wanted to sit and rest, this kind of took Carl by surprise because this was unlike Olga. She was never the type of person who was like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sit down and take a breather. She was always the type of person who was like, okay, let's go, 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 let's get to where we're going. It was a bit into their hiking when she decided to take this break and the X on this photo shows the exact location that she chose to take her little break that day. According to Carl, he stated that while she rested, he went ahead to climb a ridge and look for elk. He told her he would be back after his little lookout was over. Carl would go on to tell authorities that he was gone from somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes, but he said that it was more like 20 minutes. And when he arrived back at the very spot where he left Olga to rest, she was gone. He stated that he started yelling for her, yelling her name out, but there was no answer. He said he looked around that area and the surrounding area and she was absolutely nowhere to be found. He said that after looking around for some time by himself, he decided to head back to the camp area and gather up some people to help him search for his missing wife. The first person, based on my research, that was notified to help was a ranger named Casey Sonny Allen. Sonny was his nickname. Sonny questioned Carl and Carl told him the details I just went over. Sonny asked him if the two had fought that day, if there was any reason for Olga to just leave. 
Carl said no, that everything was fine that day, no arguments or tension at all, that Olga simply just wanted to rest for a few and that even if she did decide to walk away, she was not the type of person to get lost. Like I said before, she knew that area like the back of her hand. The very day that she went missing, a group of individuals went back to the area to search and they found no traces of Olga. Some reports claim that empty baggies were left behind with no sandwiches in them, but some reports claim that nothing was left behind. I could not find a solid answer to that, but Olga was gone and there was no trace of her anywhere. They weren't even able to track any shoe prints to see where she may have went, which I found a little unbelievable, but apparently they were unable to track any of her prints. According to Carl, the last time he saw her was when she was left sitting on a rock. I mean, where did Olga go? Within only a couple days, about 300 people were out there searching for her. They had law enforcement helping, volunteers, they brought in bloodhounds, everything. They even received help from a local Native American group who knew the land very well and were experts in tracking. Still, no one could find any trace of Olga. They did end up finding shoe prints miles and miles away that they thought could have possibly been hers, but it turns out that they were not hers. They were not the shoes that she was wearing the day that she went missing. One thing that greatly hindered their search was a huge snowfall. A snowstorm came from the west days after she went missing and the snow was heavy and thick and probably ruined any of their remaining chances of tracking her steps. Now the day that she went missing, it was September 17th. This was in September. It wasn't even technically fall yet. And there was this huge snowstorm. It was a very early snowstorm and it came through the area at the worst possible time. But as soon as the area was able to be searched again, that's exactly what they did. They searched and searched and searched and still couldn't find any trace of Olga anywhere. As weeks went on, people helping the search became fewer and fewer because especially after the snowstorm, people had very little hope she was going to be found. Within little to no time though, authorities started looking at the person who had seen her last, her husband. Carl was behind bars for about two months and interrogated frequently about the disappearance of his wife. During the two months that he was behind bars, Carl's story stayed exactly the same. To authorities, it seemed he was telling the truth and based on everything, there was no solid evidence of any foul play. So Carl was eventually released in technical custody of his brother-in-law, Olga's brother, Fred Schultz. As time passed, theories arose and most of those theories are the usual theories that we hear in a case of someone who went missing in the wilderness, such as maybe that they fell off a cliff, maybe it was an animal attack, maybe they fell into a body of water close by and drowned. None of those theories really made sense in this case though to anyone who looked into it. There were no signs of any of that happening and like I stated before, most people eventually stopped thinking that Carl had anything to do with it. So people really didn't know what to believe. Then arose the main theory in this case and that is that Olga just decided to leave. Even Olga's own family believed Carl was completely innocent. People truly believed that Olga just up and left. One of those people strongly believing that theory was Olga's own sister, Edith. During the years after Olga's disappearance, Edith had a lot to say about why she thought Olga possibly just left. According to Edith, Olga was very unhappy in the marriage, even though the marriage was extremely fresh. Edith said that Olga regretted the marriage pretty much as soon as the wedding ring was put on her finger. Edith claimed that after Olga and Carl married, Olga received letters from Carl's ex-girlfriend, Ella. And in these letters, Ella went on about how devastated she was by their marriage and how she was basically suicidal because Carl had left her for Olga. Edith claimed that this tore Olga up inside and Olga had a lot of guilt over what was done to Ella. There are also claims that Olga had wrote Ella in return, claiming that she herself was suicidal because of what happened. 
There are also some sources of mine that claim Olga wrote her own sister, Edith, and claimed that she was suicidal. Now, this case is over eight decades old, so who knows where these letters are in today's time and exactly what was said in them, but apparently there was sadness from both sides and some suicidal thoughts going on. Remember Ranger Sonny that I mentioned before? Well, he had a diary that he wrote in and he wrote a lot about this case. And in his writings, he supposedly said that both Olga and Ella eventually became friends with each other. Possibly Ella realized that Olga didn't do what she did with bad intentions, but I mean, who knows? But apparently they talked things out like women should. But of course, this case is very old. Like I've said multiple times, we, we don't know exactly what happened. Edith really believed her sister became overwhelmed by the marriage, that maybe her sister realized that it wasn't true love, more so just infatuation, and that she decided to leave the area the second she realized that Carl would be gone for enough time for her to make an escape. Edith even stated that before the honeymoon, Olga begged her to go with them. She wanted Edith to go with them on their honeymoon, which Edith obviously found odd because a honeymoon is only for the newly married couple, not for a bunch of family members to go with you because you're uncomfortable with your new spouse. Carl and Olga, they had been out in the wilderness, but apparently this area of the wilderness was not too far from the highway. According to Edith, Olga had about $30 on her at the time of her disappearance, which in today's time is about $612. So that is more than enough to get out of town. Edith believed that Olga left that area, went to the nearby highway and hitchhiked with someone never to be seen again. Edith also said that Olga was a great stenographer, meaning she was trained in typing, so that it wouldn't have been hard for her to find a job anywhere she decided to end up and maybe, you know, change her name and start over somewhere. This was the 1930s. It wasn't as hard as it is in today's time to just change your name and start a new life. So maybe that's what Olga did. Or in a sadder version of that theory, maybe she decided to hitchhike out of that area and the person that she decided to hitchhike with was a bad person and did something to her and she was eventually murdered elsewhere. I mean, we don't know, but her family truly believed that when you boil it down to the very essence of why she disappeared, that it was because she left on her own accord. Edith truly believed that her sister simply left. And apparently she waited around until the day she died for a letter or phone call, but nothing ever came. And there's a lot of cases that we've covered where somebody disappears and a family member waits for them and a strange letter will show up or somebody will call and it'll be very suspicious and we don't know if it's really them. That never happened in this case. Olga simply vanished and she was never heard from again. When it comes to Carl, he would still go to that area and search for Olga, he would still try to find any traces of her. He didn't believe that, you know, she was still in that area because they had looked everywhere. They didn't believe that her body was still there, but he would still go there and he would search. He wouldn't even go there and search with her family members. And they just, they, he would do this for years and they never found anything. Seven years after Olga went missing, Carl filed for a divorce. He legally got a divorce from his missing wife and he went on to marry and can you guess who he went on to marry? He went on to marry poor old Ella. He went on to marry Ella. I'm not entirely sure if during that period, Ella married somebody else, had kids, anything like that, or she just simply waited for Carl to come around after his wife went missing, but Ella and Carl ended up getting married. Carl finally married Ella and she finally got her wish. And some even crazier bits of information is that no one was really upset that Carl married Ella because they basically said that from all the guilt that 
Olga felt before she disappeared that Carl and Ella getting together and marrying finally is probably what Olga would have wanted. Carl and Ella would end up moving from Wyoming to California and apparently lived a very happy life together. Carl passed away in 1978 and Ella would go on to pass away almost like almost 20 years later. It was in 1998. They were buried together in St. Joseph Cemetery in Redding, California. Olga's case would go on to become the coldest missing persons case in the state of Wyoming. And from my research, I couldn't find really any information about supposed sightings of her through the years. I couldn't find any information about any Jane Doe's they ever thought could have been her. There is really no trace when it comes to what happened to Olga Major. And it doesn't look like we'll ever know. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's not a very long case. There's really not a whole lot of information out there about it. I would love to get like firsthand information, maybe some newspapers or something that have to do with this case, but I'm unfortunately not in Wyoming and I don't really have any access to that. There's not a lot of newspaper articles online about this case, but it's a weird one. When you talk about a case that really just has no trace, this is one of those. There is just nothing out there. There will be in cases where some sightings will show up or they'll think a body is possibly hers or they will find some sort of something, but nothing. And another thing about this case is that I would find it very, very suspicious if possibly Carl and Ella ended up getting together like right after Olga disappeared. I'd be like, okay, looks a little weird, but it was seven years later and they never really had any like connection during that time until years and years later. So it doesn't seem like they had, you know, like gotten rid of Olga to be together, nothing like that. And word about cases didn't spread the way that it does in today's time. Cause we know we have like the internet and social media and people are like Twittering or whatever. And like, have you seen this person? So it wasn't like that in 1934. It was a lot easier to just leave and start a new life. And a lot of, I mean, most people who look into this case think that that's really what Olga did and that she would just, she was really smart about it. And she just left her old life behind and maybe she missed her family, but she just didn't want to deal with a divorce? I don't know. I mean, I know divorce was extremely frowned upon back then, so maybe that terrified her. We don't know. What What do you think about this case? I'm very curious what you all have to say about this case. Leave any of your opinions about this strange unsolved disappearance of Olga Major down below in the comments. I try to read through all of them because you all come up with some insane theories that are very interesting to dive into. And if you have any old cases, very vintage cases, cases that happened long time ago that you want me to share on my channel for Oldies October, make sure to send any of those to my email address set up for case requests, which is gabulosiscaserequests at gmail.com. And with all of that being said, thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to listen to this case. And I will see you all in the next one.